hi guys how are you in today's video we're gonna build this beautiful splint and also I am going to be talking about topics that you wrote to me in your uh, comments you were asking me a lot of questions so one of the questions was um, what to do if you're using water and not the modeling liquid for buildup and uh, how to keep your buildup moisture content at the correct level so it doesn't uh, dry out on the model and uh, how to avoid cracks and pores and bubbles that come out on your work after you bake it but right now i am applying my um, i'm applying inside because that's what i use in my system all right so the main cause for bubbles and uh, pores on your build up after it comes out of uh, bake is one thing it's because your work dried up on the model when it dries up the little bubbles form but right now i'm applying um, fluorescent dentine but again you can just apply a patient's body um, so to prevent this from happening you need to keep your moisture level adequate as you probably noticed, I use a different brush today. That's what my what is it? that's what my regular brush looks like, and that's what my new one looks like. It's much more fat in the middle over here. It's a different style of a brush, and it's a different size. This one is. Kalinsky brush so what I am uh, and this Takanishi number four I believe and uh, what I'm trying to say is that if you have a large case then pick up a bigger brush you know it still has a small a tip and uh, you will be able to do the details i use the small brush my the takanishi one because i usually build very fast so my model doesn't my work does not dry up on the model but if you take time building then you need a bigger brush and so also of course it depends on what do you use for your buildup if you use um, buildup liquid or water let me show you a thing over here so i'm gonna take regular water from you know where i bathe my brush I don't know if you can see, but this is what I'm doing right now. I'm just putting some water on, right? And then I'm going to take my porcelain the body, dip the brush in the water and pick it up. Right? Regular water, nothing else in there. You see, it doesn't want to hold any shape. Well, it holds it, but slumps up now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take my stain and glaze liquid and apply a small drop of it it looks big but <laughs> it's actually very small and i'm gonna mix it with my water okay 
and now when I dip my brush in it and I pick up the porcelain it doesn't it won't behave the same way that the one that's mixed with the water does you can actually easily pick it up and you can build out of it and it won't slump anymore you see so this is the difference between building with water you see even if I put it on it takes just a little bit of time for it but it will slump back and just like that it melted away and this still stays so when you do that trick do not put a lot of that glaze and stain liquid bigger is not better okay more of the glaze liquid is not better for your buildup and uh, if you put too much then your work will not be able to dry up properly on the cycle and uh, when you put it in the oven and it will come out all cracked up so don't do a lot just a little bit just a tiny bit and of course use a build-up liquid when you can I use this build-up liquid it's initial GC for MC it's like for metal porcelain but it doesn't really matter for what I use it I use it for everything I even use it for Vita porcelain although I have Vita liquid but I just like that one more okay so um, what else to tell you today by the way I'm applying um, dentin right now oh yeah so if your work is big you know like a whole like roundhouse you have or you know sizable like eight units ten units what you can do start um, always start not from one side and like from one side and go to the other never do that you can start from the cuspids or you can start from like build one cuspid then the other one on the other side and build lateral then the lateral on the other side and then centrals in the end or you can start with centrals build both centrals both laterals both cuspids and so on and if you see that one side is drying up you have to watch it that's the only way that you're gonna see and notice that so you see it's drying up pick up some water no water you build up liquid or what you're using and just like a lot and just apply it to that side gently touch it and that's it okay it won't start slumping and if you did too much you can always dry it up a little bit okay and then that's it oh and another thing that I forgot look at your tray and make sure that the porcelain on your tray also does not dry out I know it's sometimes hard to you know if you have a lot of porcelain because if that dries up it will form bubbles as well and then because it's opaque you can't see that there are bubbles inside so you're gonna pick it up with a bubble and apply it on your buildup and then they all gonna come out because of the vacuum in your um, oven so what you can do for that take sponge the regular sponge I'm gonna try to show I think it's something that we all can find easily I don't have the scissors in here but it's much easier of course if, you, if I had scissors 
and you cut off a piece like this and uh, cut it up into small pieces right like this and then uh, not dip them in water a little bit so they're not completely dry squeeze them out and then put them into your build up liquid or whatever you have it right yeah, actually this is very big <laughs> you don't need it that big just probably because yeah you don't want to waste all your build up liquid on that yeah like this size is good and then you can take it and dip it in your build up liquid so dip it in and put it next to your porcelain and just take these small pieces and put it next to all the porcelains that you use and it will keep them nice and moist for you maybe you don't have to put the ones th uh, the porcelain that you're currently using you know like but the one that you are not using is good to keep it moist so i hope you like that tip okay now back to build up also you were asking me like what to do if if uh, you have cracks between the crowns on the bridge well these cracks they are almost inevitable i don't know who can avoid them i can't they always appear so before i used to do my um, work from two bakes i would make my first bake and then my second bake I, I would cut between the crowns with the knife, something like that. And uh, then I would bake it and it will, of course, separate a lot in the oven because it's cut there. And then I would grind it a little bit and then fill in the space and... Uh, bake it again and you know build up whatever little pieces that were missing and uh, i don't do that anymore because that way i tend to overbuild it you know on the second bake i would just for some reason i don't know but i have this urge to apply a lot <laughs> of porcelain on second bake so i overbuilt my work and then I would sit there and grind it and grind and grind and I hate grinding porcelain I just don't like it I like building and so you don't see many videos of me grinding the porcelain because I try to minimize it as much as possible you know just anything but that so then I started building my crowns you know just from one bake I apply everything that I need in one bake and uh, I don't cut between the crowns anymore but I do take my brush and make it flat like this no, as flat as possible and I scoop the porcelain in between the crowns like I separate them in this way so the less porcelain is in between the crowns the less there is porcelain for them to shrink and crack because it cracks only because it's very deep porcelain in there and so I do it like this okay 
No, that's approximately because I still have to apply, you know, three more different porcelains, but just wanted to show you that. And uh, yeah, so that for me worked very well. Like I stopped grinding forever and uh, I stopped having to do two bakes. I mean, when the cracks still appear and I don't know if I ever figure out <laughs> how to make your build up without cracks, I will let you know, but I haven't seen anybody. <laughs> so far figuring it out so when they still appear they are not big the crowns oops, the crowns don't uh, separate as much because i don't cut it and uh, i just take small amounts of uh, porcelain and uh, i put it in those cracks and I bake it on regular glaze program. I know that it would sound weird, but yeah, I bake it on regular gla glaze program. And um, that's it. That's all I do. And because the amount of porcelain is very small, it bakes all right on glaze, you know, it doesn't come out like underbaked or anything. It comes a little bit rough, but uh, I just polish it between the crowns and that's it. I'm gonna try to show you this on, um, on this case, how I do that. So now I'm applying... Um, clear porcelain now I am going to apply uh, regular enamel you see my moisture is too high Also, you guys asked me how to make crowns look natural. Well, there is um, one main thing I would say is to make them look like they came from that exact mouth. I am not talking about like um, all on four. <laughs> there you just make it nice shape like take a study model and copy it or take a model of somebody's very nice teeth and copy that um, I'm talking about if you are making crowns like this you know like how to make this look like it's from this mouth well, first of all of course the shade this shade is easy it's a3 doctor didn't specify um, but the rest is doesn't matter if you have uh, the anterior or posterior teeth it's still the same thing they have to be adequate in a row in a height in a bite functional and also they have to have this similar like height of contour it's this so this is where the point of teeth where they s like come out the most so this crown has to have the same height of contour and this one too now when you look at them like this they have to look like they go in a row also direction your teeth should all have the same direction so draw the direction of your neighboring teeth and then draw the direction for your teeth and follow it 
I mean, I'm not saying that always they're going to have the <laughs> same direction. Always they're going to be in the same row. Sometimes, it, you know, the tooth was sticking out or it was a bit, I don't know, looking like it was dislocated or something. Then, you know, you got to just work with what you have. But if you can provide it, then try to provide the same direction, the same height of counter. Height of counter is always in the same place for teeth. Unless, unless your tooth is erupted. Then, you know, you know when like it's much higher than the others because the lower tooth was missing and your tooth um, of the patient erupted. I have a tooth like that. It's a bicuspid. It's on my um, upper jaw because I lost the bicuspid on the lower. But by the time that I had a, an implant, it already like erupted a lot. I didn't cap it, no nothing, I just kept it as this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well I'm almost done. Okay, so I finished building this splint and uh that's the end. Let me show you what it looks like in bite from the side. It's bigger, but it's because it's gonna shrink. And uh, uh, you see, I have a different problem. I build fast and it gets too wet. That's why I use the small brush usually. This brush is too big for me. But if you have a problem with drying it up, then yeah. If your porcelain dries up on the model, just use a big brush. You will not have that problem. All right, so now I'm gonna scoop out the porcelain in between. Especially like over there. by the neck and uh, the tips of the cusps keep them together like glued together so it doesn't crack this is what happened over here I didn't do it correctly like this part this part keep it fused and the bottom, not the bottom, but the neck separated. So about like this. Okay. And uh, I will work on the margin when I take it off. Okay. Like this. And that's it. Now it's time to bake it. I'll see you after bake. By the way, check out the difference between porcelain that is without those little sponges like this two are all dried up you see and the ones with the sponges are nice they're all nice and moist so yeah it really works it's a very good trick okay see you all right, so now the bridge came out of the bake and I already grind it. So you see this part over here has a little crack, but it's not big enough to do the second bake. And I have a couple of small ones. Uh, here I just heat the metal. So let's glaze it and I will show you how I deal with that. I'm gonna apply some um, denting 
to where my crack is and now I'm gonna take my knife I'm gonna take my glaze brush and patch up little bits of um, exposed metal okay and that's it after this I can just glaze it when you're glazing don't go over the places where you apply denting and uh, in the end it's good to put on some occlusion stain and just like that that's it i'll see you after glaze okay so that's it the bridge is finally out of glaze that's what it looks like on the model and as you can see everything closed pretty well okay like this video if you liked it and um, i'll see you guys soon bye bye